Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Bus Travel Live event. Today, we will talk about Tourism for All, Himalayan Initiatives for Responsible Tourism, a very interesting topic that I personally think. For our talk, I'm happy to welcome Pankaj Pradhananga, <laughs> Director of Four Seasons Travel and Tours from Nepal. Welcome, Pankaj. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Marcus. It's really a pleasure being on your yeah, same, same for me. Same for me. We've been talking before already. Uh, so I uh, had already the opportunity to know more about this, this very interesting topic. And um, maybe for, for everybody watching here, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, who are you? Where are you from? Well, I told from Nepal, but uh, I think there's more to tell. And, and what you do? Marcus, thank you. Uh, I'm from Nepal, yes, but not uh, at the moment on top of the Everest uh, in Kathmandu, what is located at 1300 meter above the sea level. Beautiful, pristine, and with COVID now it's absolutely natural. Uh, I'm director of Four Season Travel and Tours, which is a DMC, a tour operating company based in Kathmandu. We've been operating in the Himalaya past 25 years plus, uh, started from 1992, so it's a long time. And of late, uh, to be precise, it's seven years, we have started working for a new segment uh, of tourism. That is what brought us together today. Mm -hmm. I'll be highlighting that. Aside from tourism, I'm also a faculty member uh, in a business school in Kathmandu, teaching marketing and tourism. So that is uh, something I love to do. And I'm also associated with Public Speaking Club, uh, which is known as Toastmasters International, which is uh, over 140 countries. Uh, and I'm part of that for the last 12 years. So I enjoy public speaking and listening a lot. Uh, we've traveled a bit in the Himalaya and in Europe, US, of course, for promoting and marketing uh, job uh, whereas in the Himalaya to explore and to understand the product so I have extensively traveled in Nepal, Bhutan and Tibet and in South Asian uh, region as well. Uh, that's about me and I look forward to share more uh, on accessible tourism or we call inclusive tourism yeah that over to you that's Marcus. great that's great just an information for everybody uh, who's with us here you have uh, the time uh, for a q a session afterwards after we uh, finished our talk here because i've prepared some questions um and so we get into the topic if you have questions on the lower part of your screen uh, here with uh, with this uh, window you will see the opportunity to ask your question in the q a or if you would like to talk to us directly, that's possible as well. Just raise your hand and we will talk afterwards. So let's get now right into the topic. Yeah, we are already know what we're talking about, but what is inclusive tourism? And uh, how do you see this segment of tourism coming up in, in Nepal and as well globally? Marcus, uh, before, what is before I get into what is uh, inclusive tourism? Not going by the definition, but in our common language, we can say inclusive tourism is nothing but to include everyone. So they could share and enjoy the benefit of tourism. As we know, tourism is not just a leisure activity. It is very important in our lives. And now we have understood how important tourism is when oh, you're yeah. locked inside <laughs> your house for over two months, um, at least in this part of the world. And I think Europe was no different. Mm -hmm. 
So accessible tourism, which has increasingly been called as inclusive tourism, is an initiative or a part of tourism activities where you would not exclude anyone based on their physical challenges or disabilities or caste, color, nationality or any any sort of any any sort of discrimination mm -hmm. so when you bar someone to come and enjoy your trip or your de destination or for that matter your service in in other words you are saying no to that person so accessible tourism though it started very much with the physical um excess uh, so it um, implies directly uh, targeting or people on wheelchair or the travelers on wheelchair, but it does not limit to that only. It covers people with visual impairment, low vision, hearing impairment, intellectual disabilities. And now as the segment is growing, it is also covering people who are old or elderly people. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, accessible tourism is everything in tourism because everyone is going to get old, everyone is going to have some sort of uh, mobility challenges in mm -hmm. some part of, uh, of their lives and also temporary disabilities. So, accessible tourism or we call it inclusive tourism it strives to share the benefit or the enjoyment of tourism with everyone. Mm -hmm. So that in a nutshell, tourism for all. That's why we also in simple word call, it's tourism for all. Whether you are pregnant uh, women or you are very old uh, person with, uh, you know, walking difficulty. So the facility that is designed and developed to provide people with disabilities or people with limited mobilities, that will go hand in hand with everyone. That sounds great. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's a, a very, very uh, important part as well to, to really include everybody and not telling, hey, you're not in. So this, I think, is a, is a, is a very good thing. And uh, as I said, this is, is uh, coming up now in, in Nepal and uh, around the world? Well, see, um, Nepal, it's been uh, very recent. Um, but when you talk about around the globe, yes, it is coming up very um, fast or in, in a significant number. Let me uh, refer to you the data of um, you know, World Health Organization, which mm -hmm. says 15% of world population have got some form of disabilities. When you do a math, it is almost 1 billion people. Mm. So 1 billion people who are living on this planet have some sort of challenges with their mobility or some form of disability, whether it's visible or invisible. So it's a large uh, segment of population. And when you narrow it down with people within the scope of tourism, or in other words, international tourists, mm -hmm. out of 1.2 billion people who travel, well, pre-COVID, of course, now it has dropped down significantly. Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> out of, out of 1.2 billion, 10% of uh, the world traveler they are reported to have some form of disabilities. So if you do the math, it is really a large segment of um, untapped market. That's why collective effort has been taken. UNWTO, um, ENET, European uh, Network of Accessible Tourism, they're all working together to grow this segment, not taking it as a niche market or one of the uh, very specialized segment, but it is part of the uh, mainstream tourism. Mm -hmm. 
And when people or the supplier and tourism operating sectors like tourism operators or destination management companies, mm. hotel, airline, all the services provider, when they realize this very fact that there is market which is ready to be explored, mm -hmm. then there would be more learning, more investment and more exploration. Mm. So the beginning, uh, it was more of a right to travel is a human right and inclusive tourism initiatives came from that perspective only. And uh, here, let me uh, connect the dots. Uh, even if you take American Disability Act, which was enacted only in 1990s. So if you look, that, uh, look back, it's been only 30 years mm -hmm. US has enacted ADA, which has really been a great um, springboard, not only assuring the right for people with disabilities, but also assuring the right for people travelers with disabilities. You know. mm -hmm. So that way it is very recent, but it is growing significantly. And here I would like to uh, remind uh, all our uh, participants that uh, 2016, uh, UN, UNWTO celebrated um, World Tourism Day with the theme, Tourism for All, Accessible mm -hmm. Tourism. So that also implies that the policymakers have already realized this very fact and working towards it. Whereas in Nepal, uh, it has been, there's no record that who was the first um, traveler with disabilities who came and explored Nepal. There, there were quite a few uh, clients who came uh, on a personal visit uh, to attend the conferences. Uh, they were in wheelchair, they were visually impaired, they were hard of hearing. So there's no record. However, um, if I take a name, that would be Mr. Eric, visually impaired, who climbed Everest uh, in early 2000. So, you know, it has been a long time, but in an organized way, in a collective effort whereby the businesses handholding with the uh, policy makers, uh, tourism uh, board, uh, lot, uh, many NGOs, I would say that was started only after the visit by Dr. Scott Rains um, from US who came to Nepal on uh, our invitation. Um, I hope you can see this um, yeah. screen, right? Yeah. Great. So this is Dr. Scott Rains. Um, when you asked uh, how did this tourism start in Nepal and where does it stand, uh, it will be incomplete if we do not take name of this gentleman because um, Scott had greatly contributed, I must uh, admit. I met this gentleman in uh, San Jose, uh, California, in one of my trips to US for marketing. And I knew that he was working for this segment and I, I was curious if we could build something in more dedicated or more um, organized way. So when I contacted him and he said, well, I'll, I'll come and see you. So we, he came to Ed Robert Center, who was one of the uh, key leaders of ADA in US. Um, so when he came, I was totally surprised and awestruck when I saw that he drove himself, came right on time, got out of his car, got into his wheelchair, and then we um, took forward our discussion, which was very enlightening. And at the end, um, he, he also brought um, a, a tour operator who was operating in Bay Area. So that also gave me some insight that this is a viable business or this has business uh, potential. And at the end, uh, as we in, in Nepal, we say, Ferry Beton means uh, see you again. I told Scott that we'll see you again. And not in US, but in Nepal. So, uh, 
then we we we, we left um, we kept in touch and he had never been to nepal though he had been to india helped indian government to work towards accessible tourism he had worked in brazil olympics mm -hmm. uh, china but never been to nepal and somehow i, I felt that he had great um, interest to visit Nepal. Uh, he knew that it was the land where Siddhartha Gautam, the Buddha, was born. Mm. Uh, and uh, he was really uh, keen to come. So after a few months, uh, I got in touch with him and we wanted to really take it forward. So four season travel, uh, we bought the, his ticket. Mm. Right. So perhaps he is one of the few Americans which was hosted or sponsored by a Nepali business. Right? <laughs> and then we told him that we can't pay you because he is paid as a consultant to start mm. accessible tourism uh, by Brazil or in India or China. And we said, we can't afford to pay you, but we would very much pay you with our warmth, with our uh, you know, open heart. So he said, mm -hmm. fine, as long as you host me and get my ticket, I'm there. So that's how he, he got to Nepal. And uh, 10 days trip was a big eye opener to us. To be honest, you know, initially I thought that when he arrives, we'll just get uh, to a strongest guide and a driver who can just, you know, carry him, put him in the car. But later I realized that I was totally wrong. Because I was planning to organize this trip like transporting a bag of potatoes, mm -hmm. which was absolutely not accept acceptable way. And as we discussed, and then he connected us to a local NGO, which is known as Independent Living Center or CIL Kathmandu. And then I came to know that there are people who are trained how to provide services. Mm -hmm. For people on wheelchair or travelers uh, with on, on wheelchair, so we hired one person, and that made life so easier. Though we did not have uh, an accessible vehicle back then, which we have now, thanks to Independent Living Center, what we also use for our clients. But back then, getting one personal attendant made things so very easy. And then there was no looking back. We explored, we shared, um, organized workshops. So we did not limit his knowledge and expertise only to or within Four Seasons team. Rather, we invited tour guides to be aware of this segment, to learn the basic know-how, we invited uh, hoteliers, we invited laws uh, owners from Chitwan National Park. We invited uh, guest house owners, we invited uh, airline operators, you know, so they knew, mm. they saw him for real and they realized that yes, we need to work towards catering to this segment so i would uh, just uh, closing though we'll uh, I'll, I'll connecting him later but uh, i would say that was 2014 so it's been exactly uh, six years he came in may 2014 so that is the beginning and we are kind of learning uh, it by doing and now mm -hmm. more and more companies are coming in and uh, more people have come in so after Scott's visit, we also got a little more confident that we can do it with our first hand experience. And we could go out to the market and say, hey, we have this experience. And mm -hmm. Scott was definitely very instrumental in sharing this word of mouth uh, once he got back to US after a very successful trip. Of course, that's great. Back yeah, but very interesting story, I have to say, um, to really see, hey, that can work quite easily, more easily, yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's put it in brackets, but uh, it, it's great that it works. And um, what do you think um, the inclusive tourism, it matters to, to the business community and the destinations, right? So they should more focus maybe on that. See, Marcus, as I said, um, 
uh, as per the projection by various uh, organizations, especially uh, UNWTO and WTTC, um, 1.8 billion uh, travelers was ex is expected by 2030. Let's hope that this COVID situation remains temporary only. Mm. Uh, and out of that, uh, the number of people uh, with disabilities or some form of disability is going to go up. And uh, people who are above 65 years of age, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that will also increase to 1 billion uh, senior citizens or people who are elderly, but they're fit. They want to travel. They want to explore. Mm -hmm. With the life expectancy going up, and they would definitely want some sort of um, assurance that the tour operator, local DMCs, hotels have got that facilities and know-how and patience. That is very important. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. You know, uh, to cater to their need and mm -hmm. uh, travel requirements. So there I would see um, a huge potential and it's going okay. to increase. It is not going to uh, go down, but it is going to increase in the mm. market. But of course, um, there is a market which is ready and becoming bigger. Mm. But at the same time, it is not easy, you know? And we are doing it not because it is easy thing to do. We are doing it because it is the right thing to do. Yeah. That's, you know, everyone can do easy things, you know? but when you really get into things, what challenges you, it changes you, you know, as the saying goes, things that challenges you, it also changes you for good. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've realized, you know, when we got into the segment of uh, working for people with disabilities or travelers with disabilities, we got to learn a lot. We yeah. got in touch with many DPOs, disabled people organization, or in local language, NGOs, who were working for people with disabilities. And their model of working was more on a advocacy based. You know, they were saying, okay, it is our right. So you should uh, include us. You mm -hmm. should provide facilities. And there is a shift now, you know, in from right, yes, the right to travel is a human right that is already endorsed by UNCRPD that we totally understand and respect. But more than that, there's a business opportunities. You know, why would a hotel turn its facilities into accessible room, ramps, uh, mm -hmm. elevator, and other facilities or accessible toilet, restroom? Because they see there's a clear demand which is going to increase. Mm -hmm. And initially, we had to work. We also appeared to be like an NGO or non-government organization because we mm -hmm. worked very closely with various, um, you know, with our friends and experts from um, disabled people organization. And that really worked because we could create synergy. And that also instill a lot of uh, confidence uh, within our team. And as we engage them more, we realize that it is doable. Yeah. You know? So we always said that we are doing it, it's in a lengthy way, it's a learning by doing. Like mm -hmm. we did not become an expert or we still are not experts. You know, we are learning by every passing day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say that we've been blessed as every tourist or traveler who came to Nepal, they taught us something, you know, because the disability, again, uh, the <clears throat> trap is once we handle Scott, I thought like, okay, so I spent 10 days, day in, day out. And I thought I'm, I, I know what uh, a person on a wheelchair would need. That is dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. One size fits all, does not fit any. So like other travelers, even people on wheelchair or people mm -hmm. who, are, who are visually impaired or hard of hearing, they are also different. Everyone has different need and requirements. So a junction is not good. Yes, we need to have basic understanding and 
facilities and expertise, but again, you need to ask, right? Um, there are people who come here for adventure, you know, as we were, uh, as Scott went for um, this ultralight flight in Pokhara, yeah. Well, thanks to uh, thanks to Avia Club, they hosted it, and there we met a young man, Arthur from UK, who was around the world trip by flying various machines, you know, small, big, uh, wow. or large, and then he was being filmed, right? Mm -hmm. So people come for adventure, and for them, you know, you need to ask, what do you want? I mean, sometimes they don't want to be carried at all, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that they want to push their, uh, themselves uh, by this sliding um, board. So they don't need any assistance. So in that mm -hmm. case, um, and then I have uh, some clients turned friend, like Jay will be explaining about his uh, trips. Like he came and he said, I don't need accessible van. I don't need accessible mm -hmm. car. I will use regular one and I transfer myself. Mm -hmm. okay. He's young and is really, you know, unstoppable. So it is a learning. So as we deal every traveler differently, uh, exactly the same, we need to deal with people with disabilities. And this one I'd like to add, this is exactly five years ago. Um, if you recall, there was an earthquake in Nepal, massive. Um, and some of our friends, uh, operators in Italy, they wanted to support, they wanted to come to Nepal and they formed a group. And the tour operator from Rome, she called me and she said, Pankas, um, I, I have some challenge. And I said, what, Rafi? And she said, is it okay if uh, a blind person joins our trek? trek? And I almost jumped out of my chair. I said, please, Ravi, bring him. <laughs> we need him. <laughs> and, and then that was, that was um, Marco. Mm -hmm. Blind. Um, he turned blind at the age of 18, but uh, complete, uh, you know, the blind person. And he trekked four days. Uh, that was after two months of earthquake. No hesitation, no fear. And he reached up to 3,200 meters. And guess what? Some days he used to walk much ahead than us, you know, in uh -huh. mountain. Like, absolutely stunning. And the local villagers came and saw him and said, wow, this is the spirit, you know. Yeah. So this is a lot of learning to all of us. We made a video. We launched that in World Disability Days, uh, World Disability Day, third December, and that uh, gave a lot of impetus to people who thought that oh, Nepal, uh, no, no, because there was an earthquake, and uh, who would go to Nepal? And then there was a person yeah. blind, <laughs> and he came, he tracked, and he you might, might not have expected, trip. maybe, yeah, hmm? right. So that way it is, uh, and then here, let me add, you know, why is this going to grow and why is it uh, very important? I would like to also, you know, our participant and attendant, uh, attendees um, of this uh, talk program, once again, I would like to welcome you. I think I, I did not say namaste or welcome. So this is uh, right after the earthquake in Nepal 2015. When people were in makeshift uh, camps um, outside, and there were about 60 friends, Nepalese with, uh, on wheelchair and with various form of disabilities in the camp. Mm -hmm. They were doing nothing. They were there just counting the after socks. So few friends and uh, four season travel supported, uh, you know, lots of stakes. Uh, Radish and Odell came and offered a lunch box and we took them to the botanical garden. And there we realized, you know, a day trip for them was a huge relief. Um, they could breathe again. And many of them had not been to this garden, which is only uh, 12 kilometers from the city center. Okay. They were so happy. They were really enjoying. And we organized with a friend uh, some breathing and uh, stretching session. So at the end, we felt, you know, people, yes, uh, the basics, food, 
um, shelters, you know, you need uh, medical facilities and all, but after a while you need activities, you know, mm -hmm. you need to get out of your house. And now as uh, in COVID, of course, because of all this distancing and all, we've, ne we've not been able to take them out. But of course, when this thing gets over, we will talk again. Yeah. Um, so this is also an empowering act. Mm -hmm. So many Nepalese who had never been to places, now after seeing Scott trains coming and exploring, sit one riding elephant or mm -hmm. taking ultralight flight, now my friends with disabilities in Kathmandu and Pokhara and Chitwan, they all going and started traveling. So in other words, it lets people get out of their very comfort zone and they would not really come out and they say, I'm on wheelchair, so my life is over. My exploration is very limited, you know. So in other words, it instills hope, which is absolutely um, the vitamin, you know, to, to, to get ahead in life, uh, mm. whether it's uh, physical disabilities or mental disabilities or, you know, yeah. uh, intellectual disabilities. I understand. I understand. So um, another question I would have, uh, for example, if now people watching here and think about, hey, how can I get into, well, we don't call it a niche, but how can I get into that, that topic? Uh, what would you suggest? What's the best way of getting in touch? Uh, what to, to look after? Uh, is there anything that you can well give as uh, best practice maybe? Well, see, um, again, this practices in accessible tourism is very evolving, but the basics, what we need to be very mindful um, are the team, uh, the accessories or equipments, what you have. Like, as I said, uh, we have partnered with uh, local NGO, which has got an accessible vehicle, which is fitted with um, a hydraulic uh, ramp. So our travelers don't need to be carried as we did mm -hmm. uh, for Scott, though he came prepared as a guinea pig. Well, mm -hmm. uh, not a nice term, but he was ready to yeah. be that. And I'm grateful for that. We are always grateful to Scott. But now people want to travel with dignity. Mm. So, and then even now, since we have only one vehicle um, with excess, uh, with uh, ramp, so we have to, we must tell our travelers that there's only one vehicle. And when the local people with disabilities or that uh, NGO gets foreign visitors who are on wheelchair, of course, the priority goes to them right? Not to the uh, travelers, or the, no, not to the tourists. So in that case, we have to tell them very clearly that we have limited facilities. And secondly, mm -hmm. the know-how of the hotels. How many hotels? What are the facilities? Unfortunately, um, people don't really follow universal um, uh, guidelines, you know. Uh, so in terms of a ramp, Ramp is not only you have uh, an incline, but what should be the uh, proportion or what should be the incline, you know? So one, yeah. to make one fit, you have to have 10 uh, fit long ramp. So that is here, um, it's not practiced or followed uh, religiously. So at times the hotel would write that we have got ramp, but that ramp is for luggage, not for people on wheelchair who can, you know, roll their wheelchair themselves. Yeah. When you said RAM, the RAM should be for people to travel, let them travel independently without mm. pushing them or without really giving them assistance. And mm. some travelers, they come with electric wheelchairs, right? So there you need to be really very clear because electric wheelchair, you cannot even carry, you know, it's really... Yeah heavy Heavy, yeah. in that way you know uh, what i would uh, feel the key is the knowledge experience and know-how by the team mm. so the team has to be inducted oriented and trained 
now there are even online platform where you can train your team but the best way is to make your hands dirty right mm. positively yeah. so here we have uh, engaged our team time and again and as i said every time uh, we have our um, clients mm. traveling to nepal we take that as an opportunity to um, initiate the discussion this is this was our last uh, client or the traveler freddy i think freddy uh, was supposed to be with us um, is from uk a young man of 21 and he started traveling from the early age of 17 and he chose and he was in nepal um, last year in november so what we do is uh, every time we have travelers we make it a point that he or she shares his experience mm -hmm. right what went well and what are the areas for improvement so that's how we take note and we also as you can see it's not only our immediate team but we have invited local friends since he was very young we have also invited very young um, friends with uh, disabilities we have invited hoteliers we've invited tour guides and then he shared his personal experience right mm -hmm. and and as i said the technology is advancing so rapidly so to match or to keep pace with that is really a challenge you know um, so it is good that uh, the communication has to be very clear and precise. So prior to the arrival, you send a checklist and uh, we inform them, you know, the hotel, they, they stayed in Hotel Ambassador, which is mm -hmm. fairly a newly built hotel with uh, accessible room, accessible restroom. So they felt very comfortable and very happy. So this was hosted by the same hotel where we invited industry um, friends and shared the knowledge. So I, I personally feel someone wants to get into this. Um, the best way is to get in touch with the associations um, organize trips for them as we started organizing trips for mm -hmm. our Nepali friends. We took them to Godavari just um, last uh, November. We, uh, we did one to celebrate the birthday of uh, Scott Rains. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2016. Um, so we celebrate his birthday and we took uh, a group of Nepali friends for an excursion. So, you know, this is uh, the best way is to keep learning. Mm. right uh, online on site uh, talking to people inviting associations uh, experts from various associations and engaging them into learning and unlearning process mm. yeah that, that that's, there's uh, no short cord yeah. to be honest mm. of course i think maybe not to be afraid of that specific uh, niche let's call it the niche um, this is this is what I sometimes see um, people are just scared when they see somebody in a wheelchair like oh how should I behave yeah I think having this fear gone I think is, is maybe uh, one of the first steps as well to just hey we are all here and uh, we all uh, want you to travel so I think this is maybe uh, one part that I would add from my side from my personal um, experience so um, I think having that mindset yes uh, marcus i think fear uh, is detrimental uh, not only in our day-to-day -day lives but also in in any any part of business you know yeah. uh, when you are fearful then you try to you know uh, hold things very um, you know tight so you don't want mm -hmm. to be wrong yeah right you, you don't want to fail so here in this segment, um, I think fear has absolutely no room. Um, we need to be very um, candid and honest that, mm. uh, you know, initially we said we have only handled Scott, mm. right? Uh, and, and then we handled, you know, Marco and yeah. then... So the next day. there was uh, the number was growing, and uh, here I would like to show you one more um, 
picture, well, this is not a PowerPoint, but a picture. So this, uh, as I said, in 2016, well, uh, Marcus, please also uh, flag me if our time, because we kept 45 minutes, I think, uh, flag yeah. me when the time. So this was, this is a very interesting model where we, Four Seasons partnered with um, Washington DC based, uh, International Development Institute, uh, who uh, you know rallied uh, this idea of bringing wounded heroes from U.S. So mm -hmm. the, you can see there were five uh, travelers um, with prosthetic leg, uh, and then they went to uh, Poon Hill Trek. You know, uh, and thanks to Marco, you know, when we released yeah. his video, um, they were pumped up. And this was also supported uh, back then by U.S. Embassy in Nepal. Mm -hmm. um, even our president, now you can imagine, you know, our president uh, welcomed these travelers in the palace, presidential palace, uh, before they went for the trek. So you can imagine wow. at the warmth. So yeah. that's what reminds me a line um, by a traveler that uh, even in the absence of ramps or physical facilities which are suitable for people with disabilities when we create the excess ramp with our heart and warmth you know that makes people with disabilities really you know um positive because yeah. they feel that they were really welcomed and here I'd like to uh, say with you when uh, we went, of course, this was a daunting task. Um, five people on prosthetic legs. We had a team of experts, prosthetician, you know, physician, physicians, nurse, um, you name it. Uh, of course, the trekking crew. And then when we see, when we were in this village, Tarda Pani or Gore Pani, um, we were walking and a villager came and then he literally, you know, like he was in the mood to fight. I said, why are you making these people walk yeah. and suffer? Why don't you get a porter and carry them? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's a good one. Uh, sorry if you thought so, but it is not me. They want to walk mm -hmm. and their idea is not to be carried by portraits but you know the local villagers felt that we were cutting the corners and we we're trying to save some dollars yeah. and we were, we were kind of you know um torturing them by making them walk <laughs> so of course it's not their fault you know they were very innocent people mm -hmm. um and and uh, but this is uh, what you know the smiles the joy the sense yeah. of achievement so yeah. that's what we say this is a good thing because this is um, you turn from fear to freedom hmm. and we have seen that you know whoever came to nepal traveled and at the end they felt totally liberated you know getting I mean, out of the fear and they would want more yeah. So it has helped them not only physically, emotionally, I would say it has also helped them spiritually, you know. Mm. Um, and then, as you know, Nepal has got that element very strong. People find uh, Nepal a perfect place, or for that matter, the Himalayan region, Nepal, Bhutan, Tibet. Mm. People come here for spiritual, um, you know, discovery. Mm. And here I'd like to add, uh, I, I, I've been flagged that we've got five more minutes to wrap up. Uh, yeah. So this is a friend, uh, you know, a client turned friend, Zuli, um, uh, Travel Ability Australia booked her trip. And uh, see, we organize her trip to Tibet. Mm. And it was a dream. So there we take great pride you know we're not just generating another uh, business opportunity for our company or for destination we're helping people realize their dream and that's what julie wrote me at the end that had you not started this segment with so much of confidence and conviction we would have never 
planned to be here or we have never thought to imagine to come to, uh, you know, mm. and still reach to Everest Base Camp. You know, we are so wow. grateful to our <laughs> team in Tibet. And here in Nepal, we had accessible vehicle, but in Tibet, there was no, there's none. So the guide was very Buddhist. <laughs> in yeah. true sense, right? He yeah. had great empathy. So he did phenomenal job by making them feel absolutely comfortable, confident, yeah. and at ease at 5,200 meters. And Julie, you know, she has been um, really grateful for that opportunity of Nepal uh, trip, you know. So mm -hmm. these are a few examples. Uh, Zeza, our conversation would not be uh, complete because Zeza, I met him in Brussels in one of the panel discussions of um, the second version of uh, uh, this destination of the um, destination for world that um, accessible tourism conference. Uh, mm -hmm. There, I was a panelist and Zeza was also a panelist. So guess what? Zeza flies her par his paragliding with wheelchair in New Zealand. Here, wow. he was not allowed to do that. He was here exactly a year ago and uh, he is unstoppable. And he is the one who refused to use accessible van and he said, no, I don't need it. I would do it myself. And so that's the spirit, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah. we don't wait to make or have everything accessible and ready because there are people who want to challenge themselves and challenge the destination. So that's how we are increasing the pie of this uh, segment locally and also globally as uh, we are expanding to Bhutan. Our friends in India, they're also working to bring this and we are creating synergy, working together. And, uh, you know, in post-COVID uh, situation also as the corridors are expected to open like Bhutan and Nepal. So we are looking mm. into that possibility in Nepal, uh, Bhutan, India, and also to work together and engage. Um, mm. And here I would also like to mention that the support Nepal Tourism Board, Nepal government has, have made is phenomenal because um, uh, there was 1.3 kilometers of accessible trail, which was uh, um, invested and opened in uh, near Pokhara, which is good for all. You know, there's a trekking trail, first time in Nepal, and Nepal Tourism Board um, invested. Likewise, uh, other Ministry of Nepal also very supportive towards this, uh, uh, you know, objective. Um, mm -hmm. The Association of uh, Disability Organization, NFDN, is super active and advocating not only from right perspective but from you know uh, business side so you know all in all um, i see a tremendous uh, potential of this segment to grow in nepal and mm -hmm. nepal being such a small market uh, with a huge potential you can relate to a global market you know how big potential or untapped potential it has mm -hmm. yeah indeed I hope indeed I Question. That's very interesting. And uh, I see we already have somebody who would like to talk to us. So um, right. now the do time. we open the, the Q&A now? Yes, sure. Perfect. So we well, have uh, Manisha here who would like to talk to us. I just give you permission and then you can ask your question right away. Open for everybody else as well. Yeah, if you'd like to talk, raise your hand. So Manisha, here you are. Hello. I found the conversation very interesting. Oh, there you are. I have, <laughs> yeah. Hi. I found the conversation very interesting and I would like to just question Mr. Pankaj that uh, should we put uh, his enterprises in a social enterprises category? Is it so? Thank you, uh, Manisha. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not a very big fan of this term social enterprising, social okay. enterprise, because every enterprise has social obligation. We are exactly. very much a for-profit uh, business, but uh, with, 
you know, profit uh, with, uh, you know, accountability. And uh, we are not, you know, we are like any, any SMEs, uh, we are for profit. But while making profit, we definitely want to assure and ensure that uh, it is ethical and it is for the benefit of society. So if in that matter, yes, you, you may call us social enterprise. <laughs> All right. And I also have one more question. Uh, how much difficult do you find to, uh, you know, market your um, business? Like, uh, well, uh, our, see, this is one of the segments uh, we've been promoting. We've been in business mm -hmm. and uh, for over 25 years and we uh, cater to high end and uh, mid segment clients, uh, mostly mm -hmm. um, elderly and retired. So, there comes this accessible and inclusive tourism segment. So for mm -hmm. this, um, we have applied slightly different approach here. Word of mouth mm -hmm. really works the best. You know, it, it is spreads yeah. like wildfire. So yeah. we have been going very slowly, um, but in a very steady way. And uh, we are working with associations. We are working with, um, you know, accessible tourism agents. There are few who have uh, specialized in the segment. So we are keeping in touch with them. Um, and it's a very small uh, segment or a very closely needed um, community, I would say. So uh, doing one right thing, it spreads and uh, it is growing in that way. But slowly, even the international travel marts are having, uh, you know, a segment or um, uh, people who are highlighting uh, accessible tourism. And that's what now Buzz.Travel uh, is also going to do in their virtual travel mart. We are going to highlight and that communication brought us to this talk, uh, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I hope I that answered is very interesting as well. Thank you. And yeah, one more thing, one more thing, if you have one minute, one more minute. Sure. I observed that uh, in the conversation we were uh, having, uh, all the clients were from, you know, international boundaries and hardly I found uh, anybody from uh, maybe from India or from maybe Nepal. So is it so that is it so much uh, expensive thing to be done for the middle class, uh, you know, uh, families or is, is a criteria to this? Like mm, accessible to the Thank zone? you. Thank you, Manisha. That's a very uh, pertinent question. See, um, there's no, uh, again, you know, we are talking about inclusive tourism. So we'd not say middle class or lower income bracket. We cater to everyone. And yes, we have ca catered to clients from India also when they came here for um, a conference, um, you know, so they were post and pre uh, conference. But yes, that is the segment what we are working uh, with our Indian counterparts. Um, and I can see Mr. Ajay Sarma from Yatrik.com, who has been a pioneer in India, um, along with uh, Planet Able in India. So we've been engaging into that conversation. And now, as you know, post-COVID scenario, a lot of projection uh, and prediction is First, the domestic tourism and then the regional tourism. So we cannot undermine. We will make our price point accordingly, you know, choosing the product's uh, ingredient right. But so far, Nepali travelers are concerned. Yes, we have catered to Nepali travelers. Um, if I have to name a friend, uh, also a client and a very good well-wisher, Sagar Prasai, he has traveled with us a couple of times. Um, so yes, um, uh, you know, price is something that you pay for the value and, and we, uh, you know, put the ingredient accordingly so it can be, uh, you know, affordable and manageable. So we are open for that discussion if you have any All right, price mix. Thank you. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, Actually, well, I'm pursuing. Yeah. Well, well, I would uh, like to, you know, uh, thank you, uh, Manisha, for... Uh, I can also see Mr. Abdullah. Um, uh, he is joined. He has joined us from uh, Istanbul, and he is one person who was um, key supporter in um, Wounded Heroes Trek. Um, well, after that, yes, that accessible um, uh, 
trail inauguration. So, uh, Mr. Abdullah, would you like to put forward any questions or any observation or say your um, experience? Feel free just to raise the hand. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or uh, ah, yes. yeah. And I then see. I would go to Freddy. You know, uh, I can see Freddy also there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Abdullah. Good to see you. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, that's great. So nice to see you. Sorry for coming late. I had some issues to work on. So definitely, uh, I mean, when Pankaj is here, first of all, I saw some pictures also just a few minutes ago uh, about uh, especially what we did about disabled people, uh, differently abled people, what we did about them uh, with the leak pictures and others. So I was also checking those photos a few minutes ago. Yeah, definitely. It is like reshaping, I think, the main subject, isn't it? So uh, for Nepal, uh, I think tourism can be one of the game changers at this situation. We all know that uh, there are difficult situations in everywhere. And of course, Nepal is having some uh, kind of issues for the, for the migrant people come, coming back to their countries also. So the, we can say for the production level, uh, the ex export level is not that much but there is a uh, wonderful god-given country uh, and uh, tourism has uh, what i always say in nepal tourism has much more potential in nepal so then of course we can't see these kinds of very when many people are dying we can't say that there's an opportunity to use it at this time but uh, of course when you look at the future you have to plan something so the main thing we are trying to push, uh, okay, this is not, hope this is not the end of the world. We all believe that. And everywhere is starting normalizing now. At this point, I think how you react quickly is getting more important because for people to feel confident when they go to a place, that will be one of the key points. It looks like that. I mean, they will say, what will happen if something happens to me? And you have to somehow uh, convince them with your quality of service, with, uh, with your promises to them. Uh, of course, there is nature and adventure, which is advantage of Nepal at this point, because in Nepal, people don't go to, let's say, uh, closed museums for 40 people. Uh, they are not crowded in areas, especially in the nature. So this can be a big advantage. They, of course, opening new destinations for tourism inside Nepal, besides the ones which we know, I mean, Pokhara, Kathmandu, Chitwan, there can be many destinations added to that. The connectivity becomes Im important, of course, on that. So if we can use this as an opportunity for the future of the country and the people, tourism has much more potential to offer in Nepal. That is what I believe, honestly. And uh, since as an airline, we are trying to promote Nepal as a tourism destination from the beginning. I mean, we can see all the areas a little bit because our, we are looking from that angle. Okay, what else can be done in Nepal for tourism? What else can be changed positively in Nepal for that? So this is our point mainly. Uh, and as Pankaj also mentioned that then, I mean, we are trying to collaborate with every possible thing which can promote tourism, which can uh, also show the beauty of Nepal to anyone. For me, I, I will just raise a point here. Maybe we, we have to talk about that. When we say tourism, it comes sometimes too much commercial to people's mind. But tourism is not just commercial. Tourism at the same time is sharing the beauty of your country with the people also. I mean, it's a kind of sharing also. We have to look from that angle because when you say tourism, oh, in these conditions, how can we think about tourism kind of things come, but this is not that. I mean, uh, if we believe that the beauties of the world belongs to everyone, let the people come and see that. Of course, in Nepal, when we serve them, let's serve in a good way, so we can also get some, uh, of course, some commercial side of the story will be there. So this is mostly my point. Thank you, uh, I, I, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Abdullah. We're really glad, you know, you've always been a great support uh, with Turkish Airways, uh, Turkish Airline, and we can't wait to welcome you back. Um, oh, yeah. You know, fly very soon, and then we look, for, take forward this conversation with new vigor. In the meantime, I see a very good friend, uh, and we'll, 
as I said, was our last uh, client turned friend uh, who explored in Nepal last year, Freddie Sefil from UK. Freddie, um, uh, Vlad, will you please unmute? No, I, uh, I, I will do. I will do. Just uh, on the way, just an information for Pratap. Uh, we have seen your question here uh, about the insurance. Um, we come back to that after uh, the next uh, next talk. Yeah, give us just a just a minute. It's ten o'clock. So let's see. Freddie. So, audio. Hello. Does this work? Ah, now. There you are. Great. Hi, Freddie. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Yeah, thank you both <laughs> very much for doing this webinar. Uh, it's been great to see uh, Pankaj your journey in this space and, and just go over that again. Um, and I often think back to uh, my wonderful memories from my time in Nepal and um, yeah, just uh, pretty uh, amazing to see what, what I have achieved and uh, with, with the help of um, Nepali people. Um, so just a couple of quick observations, I guess. Um, firstly, what you said on, um, about word of mouth, um, I completely agree with uh, how important that is um, because especially people with disabilities uh, who might not uh, know the lay of the land, they might not um, be very confident. Uh, one of the key areas is uh, trust and they have to know that someone has been there and can, can share with them their own experiences. Um, so I completely agree with that. Um, and, and secondly, I would just add that, um, yeah, for me, the idea of accessibility and inclusivity uh, it's not just physical, but um, psychological, and there's a lot of, um, uh, often a lot of barriers there in terms of whether um, people are just not willing to to uh, be inclusive and give people with your with disabilities the opportunity to speak. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, especially in Nepal, it's very clear to see uh, how open the culture is and how uh, willing they are to be inclusive in that respect. Yeah, that, that's really true. That's really true. Um, I see uh, Pankaj, where, uh, yes. you're still there? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect. I just, I saw you, just you're vanishing as uh, you're still with us. That, that's good, that's great. If you, if you allow, uh, Marcus, if you allow, yeah. I, I, I've seen quite a few friends who have been mm -hmm. absolutely um, supportive towards the cause of um, our initiatives. So um, may, I, may I invite um, Veneranda Matteo from Philippines. I know it's quite late for her. Um, are, you, are you there, Veneranda? Would you, would you like to share quickly your observation or any questions? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can answer uh, just right in between uh, the question that has been asked here. Oh, yes. um, what and type of insurance is required if you, okay. for example, have somebody with disability uh, and um, well, have a, have a tour with him? Well, um, Pratap Da Mozo, I know Pratap, uh, he's, he's joined from Paris. Um, see, the insurance, um, I would say, we don't know exactly because here locally we are insured, our vehicles are insured and um, third party insurance would be there. But from the point of origin and you being a tour operator, uh, I believe you know better and how things might have changed or how things have changed um, post COVID or during the COVID scenario. Um, I think we need to wait and watch. Um, but I honestly speaking, I don't know exactly what uh, insurance things you need to be. But as an operator, yes, you have to be insured and every traveler, as any other traveler, you need to have a insurance coverage. And uh, once you uh, specify or mention that you have um, physical disabilities or you are a person with disabilities, I'm sure insurance company would uh, suggest and um, put forward uh, certain uh, coverage. 
Um, may I may I ask Freddie if uh, because he's recently traveled. Freddie, would you like to share your personal experience? Like, how did you manage or navigate with the insurance company? Would you like to add here or put shed some light? Okay. Anyway, that that. that that uh, so Matthew is asking, okay, yeah, I think it's good. You know, you can also write uh, the question, Matthew, is there any plan of having a conference after a pandemic? Well, I think I would direct this question to our friends from um, DPOs, uh, Ganesh ji, Kiran, Silpakar ji, um, you know, perhaps uh, Simo, you know, the last one was supported by Ministry of uh, Women and Social Welfare. We did uh, with CIL, Independent Living Center. We did one ACR try, that is 2016 March, when we had invited about 60 plus friends with disabilities. And that was a more of a right-based moment where they willed or they rolled their wheelchair from different parts of Valley for three days, creating awareness uh, right uh, from the street. And then 2016, we did this conference uh, of accessible tourism with the help of uh, International Development Institute and Nepal Tourism Board. So perhaps we can look for something of that sort in 2022, uh, hoping that uh, the business gets back gets back to normalcy by 2021. So let's hope and pray and also keep working towards that uh, um, Vendrada. So I hope I answered your question. Um, Simo says, hi, are you, okay. Freddie says, I use standard travel insurance covering my medical equipment. And I recall that there was a bit of a uh, challenge, um, Freddie, when we, you know, put you on the flight from Kathmandu to Singapore. Though we did mention that you are in a wheelchair and Freddie was traveling with his electric wheelchair, which is pretty uh, heavy. So we had to struggle a bit. Um, so yes, these challenges are there. Um, and then we put our level best and we continue to do that. And uh, so, Okay, uh, Simo says, hi, Rahul. This is Rahul from Delhi. I have a, one question. I heard that you have only one vehicle available in Kathmandu. So how many people with disability can take in one go? This is really an interesting segment. So I shall connect with you later. This uh, Rahul from Delhi. Okay, great, Rahul. Thank you for joining us. At the moment, one, and that is Toyota Hyas. So it has been modified. Interestingly, when we, or Ganeshi would be the right person to answer, um, I will connect Ganesh Kesi, is the president of Independent Living Center Kathmandu. When we failed to order the factory built accessible vehicle through Toyota, they, they were not pretty keen. He bought a Toyota Hyas and then it was taken to India, I think Delhi or Haryana somewhere, Punjab, and then fitted with the accessible, uh, that ramp, hydraulic ramp. So it can take, uh, we have taken up to four persons on wheelchair in one go. So at the moment we can say the capacity would be four, um, but we also use transfer boards for people uh, who can, you know, whose hands are strong, not quadriplegic. Um, so even the transfer boards can be used, but yes, um, at the moment we've been doing mostly FITs and uh, I think post COVID scenario with the physical distancing, we, were, we will not really expect the groups to come. Um, and then there we be mindful of safety of our team as well as safety and uh, hygiene of our travelers. So I think one van uh, at the moment uh, is good to start with, knowing the fact that back in 20, 
15 or 16, we had zero van, accessible van, and a few more um, companies and uh, NGOs are willing to bring. So in our pool, we hope to have minimum two to three vehicles, uh, let's say by 2021. And uh, I hope I answered the question. Let me ask, uh, May I, um, I just yes. uh, shortly in between, we have now still five minutes left. So, um, and we have two more questions in there. Maybe we should uh, go with those. Uh, so we got every, every question that has been asked answered uh, before we need uh, to, to finish the event here, yeah? So uh, you see, um, what do we have here? From uh, Simone, Simone asked, a partnership, involve hotels as much as we can and link with government as much difficult it is. Leverage adaptive sports, adventures, tourism to, to take Nepal a unique uh, destination for accessible tourism. So this is uh, more the idea, what, what do you do? Um, and so on, do we have anything to add in that kind of, uh, of part here? Catch you on, on mute. Okay, yeah, Simo, Simo, uh, if I shout very loud, he can hear me because he's my neighbor. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he's just opposed it. Uh, thank you, Simo, for coming. Uh, I know you were in another webinar. So, Simo organizes um, Engage, uh, or is part of an NGO called Engage that organizes wheelchair basketball and he's engaging youth uh, uh, inclusion through sports. So we've been partner of his event. Uh, Turkey Air was the title holder. So yes, Simo, we have this challenge engaging all the stakeholders, especially the government agency is a um, daunting task. But as I said, they have been uh, pretty um, accommodating and um, you know positive uh, when contacted well in advance and um, you know, kind of uh, lobbied uh, in, a, in a proper way. So I think we need to continue that. Yes, at the moment, government agencies agenda is slightly, you know, more focused into health and, um, you know, uh, safety aspects, but eventually tourism has to come. And that's what we're trying to make people understand that tourism is not only for leisure, you know, it, it affects every segment of the economy. Um, even every tourist would have at least two eggs. So a poultry farmer, a feed producer, transporter, you know, the absolutely all segment of value chain is affected by tourism. So that's why we are engaging. And here we have Narayan Prasad Pokhrelji. He is also leading a forum to bring all the associations together and um, you know, advocate uh, our, you know, positive agenda. So the government should understand and eventually when they are convinced, you know, that's why how we communicate our narratives have to change that we don't do this only for the benefit of our business or for the limited business of tourism sector, but we are doing this for greater good. So when they understand it, I think, uh, you know, nothing can stop us. Yeah, really. I mean, you have to, uh, have told us so much now about this, uh, well, about uh, the accessible tourism and uh, the, uh, including tourism. Uh, I think this is a, a, a great, well, let's call it a challenge uh, maybe at some point, but a great opportunity on the other hand as well. So to really get into into that and really to well to to open the eyes for hey what what else can we do maybe and to really include everybody and uh, make them travel to where everybody else can travel as well i mean uh, this is uh, what everybody wants to explore the world more or less yeah except you're sitting at home and you are not allowed to go out but in general i think everybody wants to see the world so i really really loved the the information you gave us today about this topic so um i would uh, now uh, Asking for some last words, maybe, um, before we, we, uh, we close the event here, because I think that you could, I believe, talk for hours about that, because there is so much to mention in the end. Uh, but as I said, we, we need to, uh, to, to uh, finish at some point. And of course, 
everybody can uh, contact you. I'm uh, quite sure you're always open to talk, uh, whether uh, it's uh, on, your, on your website or on, on the bus travel platform, on the bus travel trade fair that we will have now starting from 29th of June till the 3rd of uh, July, uh, where you uh, can present yourself, you can get in touch with everybody. Yeah, so so some, some words you would like to, to say? So thank you, um, Marcus, the team Buzz Travel. It is definitely um, a wonderful opportunity to reach out to your large community. Uh, I know this is not only uh, in Zoom, you also have Facebook Live and you have 2,300 uh, members in your community. But the most oh, important <laughs> is, um, most important is the uh, online event uh, or the travel mart what you are hosting. I would urge everyone to be part of it because uh, now the technology have, you know, it has made our life easier. And imagine if there's no technology, it would have been very hard. So this is the time. And uh, so far our initiative for inclusive tourism is concerned. Yes, Nepal is doing its bit which is very small uh, contribution, but globally, we all need to engage um, and involve and empower uh, the community. Uh, everyone would feel absolutely you know, good. And as, as we often call that we are in the business of sharing happiness. You know, we're not selling tour, but we are sharing happiness. And we need to do it in a proper way so no one is uh, left behind and no one feels, you know, uh, not included. So it is a challenge, but a good challenge to take. And as I said in the beginning, it is not an easy thing to do, but it is definitely a right thing to do. So on that note, I would like to thank everyone who took out time to uh, partake in today's discussion. Um, we will take this forward. Uh, I see many friends uh, here. Well, thank you everyone uh, for making it. And uh, let's work together and take this initiative forward. And uh, we are ready to learn and unlearn and that's the way forward. Thank you. Exactly. Marcus, We're happy to support you. Just let us know. I think we will stay in contact anyway. So uh, when, if, whenever we can support you, uh, just let us know. And everybody else who has questions about bus travel, uh, about the travel expo now end of the month, let me know and let's meet there. And uh, yeah, let's, let's bring this, this segment forward as well. As I said, we are always open to support. Thanks a lot for, the, for this nice talk. And uh, yeah, stay safe and Everybody else, have a great day, have a great evening, have a great morning from wherever you're, you joined us and stay safe and see you in the next event then. Thank you. Bye-bye.